Thai grade elevens. It is really, really cold, but by the time you get this lesson, I'm sure it is going to be a lot warmer. For those of you who watch the amazing program, Wild Earth Live, and I'm not talking about the one hour in the afternoon on SABC, I'm talking about the actual three hour sunrise safari every morning and the three hour sunset safari every afternoon. But anyway, the incredible news is today it snowed in the Kalahari. And there was poor Dylan showing everybody the snow on the mountain behind him in the Kalahari. I never thought I'd look to see the day. And so that explains why it's so incredibly cold here. But by the time you get this, hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer. Okay, so I'm quickly going to go through with you the different parts of the apple that we've dealt with so far. Now, it's terribly important that when you imagine the eyeball, you must see it as a spherical structure. So it's like an orange. Okay, picture it like an orange. And everything that is in it is three-dimensional. Okay, so it's a little sphere. So remember that the eye has, the wall of the eyeball has got three layers to it. The outermost layer, the entire thing is called the sclera, but there are some differences in different parts. So for the posterior, one third, uh, sorry, five sixths of the sclera. The sclera is the white of the eye, and it contains quite a few blood vessels. It is very, 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 very tough, and it is very firm. And so it is one of the things that maintains the shape of the eyeball, which is important. Then remember that the rectus muscles and the oblique muscles attach to the sclera. So in a medial longitudinal section, what will be visible is a superior rectus attached here. And then remember at the other end of the superior rectus, it attaches on the inside of the little bony socket, the orbit. Okay, and then at the bottom here, although it's not labeled, this is obviously the inferior rectus muscle, which is attached to the sclera here, and at the other end would be attached to the orbit. Okay, then remember that the front one sixth of the cornea, um, of, of the sclera, is the cornea. And that is transparent. It has no blood vessels in it. And it is thicker than the rest of the sclera. And so it bulges outward slightly. And so this drawing is not a really accurate representation of the fact that it does bulge out and that it's thicker than the rest of the sclera. Okay. The second layer of the eyeball is the choroid. Make sure that you spell it correctly with CH there. And the choroid is the layer that contains a lot of black pigment. Okay, so its function for the majority of the eyeball is to absorb light rays. So it's important that light rays don't come into the eye and then bounce off and go and go somewhere else and then bounce off, etc because then it would be a very fuzzy image. So that's the choroid. Then the two important things about the choroid are at the front here. Now you must remember this is three dimensional. So what looks like something that just sticks downwards here or sticks upwards here, remember is three dimensional. So this is the iris of the eye. And the iris, remember, contains circular muscles and radial muscles. In the middle here is the pupil, the little hole. And that when the circular muscles of the iris contract, the pupil becomes constricted. It becomes
becomes much smaller and it lets less light in. At that stage, the radial muscles of the iris would be relaxed. This would happen if the individual is in bright light. The pupil constricts. The second important thing about the front of the choroid is that there's a little bulge here and here in longitudinal section. But remember, it's actually all the way around the inside of the eyeball. There's this little, almost like a speed hump. Okay, and that is the ciliary body. And the ciliary body contains circular ciliary muscles and radial ciliary muscles. Suspended from the ciliary body, remember in three dimensions, is the little lens and that is held in position by suspensory ligaments. We'll talk about them later on. And then the innermost layer of the eyeball is the retina. It's got a number of layers of cells, some of which are neurons, but really importantly, some of them are photoreceptors. And there are two kinds of photoreceptors, they're rods and cones. Remember that the rods are found in the highest concentration towards the front of the retina. So there, 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 there would be rods. And the cones are found in the highest concentration at the back of the retina, especially at the fovea or the fovea centralis. Remember at the blind spot, where the optic nerve and neurons of the optic nerve leave the eye, there are no rods and no cones, and an individual is blind at that spot. Light rays that fall, that pass through the cornea, through the lens, and hit the blind spot are not perceived. Okay, all right. We'll talk about the other parts later on. So remember, you must know the position and function of the retina. The lens, the cornea, the choroid, the sclera, the optic nerve, the ciliary muscles, and the suspensory ligaments, because that's what we've dealt with so far. Okay. We've spoken about the macula and the fovea centralis being right in the center, and about the blind spot. Okay. All right, now we're going to look at what we hear calling the contents of the eyeball. And first of all, we're going to talk about the lens. So the lens is a biconvex body. It's made of living cells, and it's surrounded by quite a tough membrane called the lens capsule. So the lens is transparent, and it is elastic. And it's suspended by the suspensory ligaments from the ciliary body. The function of the lens is to refract or bend the light rays entering the eye and thus focus them on the retina of the eye. It is able to change shape and by doing that, the lens is able to focus on structures that are different distances from the eyeball. But I will go back and talk about that later on. In addition to that, there are three chambers. Tony, you should never have told me that I always say that. Because now every time I say it, I think back to Tony laughing at me. Okay. All right. There are three chambers in the eye. What are called the anterior chamber, the posterior chamber, and the vitreous chamber. So I'm going to show you where they are so it makes sense. All right, the anterior chamber is behind the cornea but in front of the iris. Anterior chamber. The posterior chamber is directly behind the iris. So it's this mauvey bluey thing posterior chamber. And those two chambers are filled with a liquid that is very watery and so, so it is called aqueous humor because it's watery. Okay. The rest of the eyeball 
is called the vitreous chamber. Vitreous chamber, okay. And the vitreous chamber is filled with vitreous humor. And vitreous humor is very, very jelly-like. It's completely different from aqueous humor. Vitreous humor, much, much more jelly-like. Um, so it would be like chocolate sauce that hasn't been warmed up or honey. So it is not runny at all. It's much more jelly-like. Aqueous humor, much, much more liquid. Okay. So anterior chamber behind the cornea in front of the iris, posterior chamber behind the iris in front of the lens. They are filled with a very watery liquid called aqueous humor, which is secreted by the blood vessels of the iris and the ciliary body. That fluid is transparent and it contains dissolved nutrients. And it's really important in helping to maintain the shape of the eyeball and assisting in refracting the light rays which enter the eye. The vitreous chamber is behind the lens. It is filled with vitreous humor, which is a jelly-like mass. And if you dissected the eyeball, it would actually, as you cut through the sclera and put pressure on the eyeball, it all squeezes out as a big blob of jelly. The vitreous humor is terribly important in maintaining the shape of the eyeball, which is important for focus. But in addition to that, it assists in focusing of light rays and helps to hold the retina in place, which is also important for focusing. Okay, right, so what have we got here? Now you can see the whole thing in sort of three dimensions. So I'm not interested really in the sclera. I'm mostly interested in the fact that you can see the iris here and you can see the pupil in the middle of the iris here. You can also see the lens as being a biconvex structure held in position by the suspensory ligaments, which attach from the periphery of the lens to the ciliary body. From the periphery of the lens to the ciliary body. And they are all the way around the outside of the lens, from the edge of the lens to the ciliary body. Okay. Don't worry about the rest of that. You, you know the rest of that stuff. Okay. This also shows really nicely the three-dimensional structure of the iris and the pupil, but it doesn't show too well um, the ciliary body and the suspensory ligaments being a three-dimensional structure. Okay, so this is the end of lesson three, and you are to complete the activity 6.13 on page 188 of the textbook. Which remember, this is grade 12 work in the Department of Education, the Government Department of Education. And so all of this work is in the grade 12 textbook. And so I've posted those, this, each of the activities on Google Classroom for you in the general section on the I. Okay.